Hello, everyone. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, a life unscripted with your host, Christina Rivera. Our guest today is Shane Whalen, founder of Pet Containment Services, an affordable hidden pet fence to keep your pet safe. We all, he also owns a software business called PetBitter.com. Today, Shane and I discuss the five steps to standing out in your marketplace and winning. Hi, Shane. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, a life unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you out here today. You've been a very successful business owner, um, but it's not always been easy. Pet bitter and pet containment services. uh, There's been some struggles in growing your business, and you're going to share what brought you to the place where you've gotten successful with the five steps to standing out in your marketplace and winning. Uh, Because that's the one thing right now. There's a lot of businesses, there's a lot of competitions, but how do you stand out so that you win? Uh, Before we go to sharing your wonderful tips, share with the audience a little bit about your backstory and what brought you to starting your business. Well, for me, I started my service business, I think it's it's around five years ago now. And, you know, it was just me and my pickup truck and my shovel. And I I started just by passing out flyers and just trying to work it and trying to make it happen. And Mm -hmm. I would, you know, installing invisible fences, you know, at the time I didn't have a trench or anything. So it's just me and my shovel. So some jobs would take two entire days. Mm. And I remember here in Michigan, you know, winter hit and I had, you know, having a couple months off to kind of regroup and recalibrate really was helpful from the standpoint of catching your breath. Mm -hmm. And I think that first couple of months, you know, we did like 14 grand in revenue Mm. and having those three months off to like just regroup, you know, I got a website. We started marketing that website. Um, I started joining networking groups and going deep into that. Um, and so that following spring, things just took off uh, in a big way. You know, I paid off all my student loans, all my business loans. And um, by the end of that year, we had done, you know, well over $100,000 in revenue. Wow. And I was excited about the future, even though I was exhausted, you know, it was just me. And, you know, I, I, at that point I had a van and a trencher and, um, you know, for me, everything I've ever done, I've, I've always really thrown myself into, you know, sports and and everything. I'm really passionate and I didn't think business would be any different, but what happened the following spring was, you know, when you make a six figure dent, in a tiny niche market, what starts to happen is there's a ripple effect. And that following spring, you know, I was all of a sudden um, on everyone's radar. And, you know, one particularly unique thing about the pet fence industry is that it's, for the most part, a a one-time service. Mm -hmm. Uh, People are going to get their pet fence installed once. They might do a service call down the road or buy a product or a battery plan or something, but you know, it's, it's really a one-time service though, compared to like lawn care or carpet cleaning or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so, um, people have to have a dog, then they have to be into the concept, then they have to hear about you and then they actually have to go with you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to say it's cutthroat would be an understatement. And I found this out the hard way, mm-hmm. but that second year when spring started, things went from being really good to to really intense, you know, I, I had people, people started, you know, calling me saying, Oh, we heard this about you. I had a competitor write a bad review. Um, Mm -hmm. I would have people call me up and just be aggressively rude to me. Just, it was weird. And I wasn't used to that. (laughs) Um, and so, you know, I, and I would have like a legitimately good conversation, like, you Mm -hmm. know, and all of a sudden, we'd schedule a job. And then 30 minutes later, I'd get that phone call back mm-hmm. uh, saying, you know what, Shane, we are no longer is- interested in working with you. Click. And wow. stuff like that would happen all the time. Yeah. And, um, you know, hearing and feeling that on a daily basis, uh-huh. it, it does start to wear on you. And at a certain point you're like, wow. You know, you you start wondering. Maybe I did do stuff. You know, some of the stuff people would bring up to me would it could be so absurd and ridiculous. <laughs> but at a certain point, you hear enough of that, it starts to maybe I did do this something thing. wrong. Yeah, yeah, you begin to doubt yourself. So now you go through the part where you were doing super successful. Now your competitor is being cutthroat, nasty, and actually just 
putting a bad word on you. How do you step out and pull yourself up where now you're, you're winning and people are seeing that, Hey, I do got the goods to go forward. How, how did you turn that around? Well, one, you know, making the decision to look inward instead of outward on a daily basis, you know, being really resourceful. Mm -hmm. um, when I got a good little piece of, of business information, you know, I just, I latched onto that and just implemented it immediately. I was the customer service and referral king. Everything mm -hmm. about the job was perfect. We were on time. I was the funniest, coolest, you know, most, you know, I needed that referral. I needed that five-star review. I needed that raving fan in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, to really stand out in a marketplace, you know, I think as business owners, we're so eager to, to talk about ourselves and our awards and quote stats and all this stuff um, that you, we kind of forget that we're talking to a person. We're talking to a mom and a daughter, a spouse, you know, to be able to just talk to them and connect with them, mm -hmm. offer relevant value, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, and, and connect with them yeah. and through the noise that they're hearing, whatever that is, you mm -hmm. know, it, whether it's from competitors or they just moved in from out of the town mm -hmm. or they're dealing with, you know, their four or five kids to, to come in mm -hmm. and offer relevant value that truly helps them um, is one huge way to be successful and to stand out in your market. Yes. Yeah, I gathered that you really have to, um, for them, uh, get them to understand that I'm here to serve you and what I have is valuable and can serve you and help you. Um, and I think that's the thing. I'm getting relevant value from you. And also I'm getting that you really have to come across as the expert to them, that you're the number one expert in this thing they're looking for. Yeah, truly knowing like what you're talking, in my world, the pet world, knowing the dog breeds, you know, being an expert on that, knowing that cool little tidbit of information about their breed of dog or, mm -hmm. you know, that really comes across well, um, you know, and then mm -hmm. people love convenience. That's a good thing. But people love the experience of working with you more than anything. You know, the way you answer the phone, uh, you know, when they see that five star review on Google. Mm -hmm. They finally make that phone call. How does it feel when they're going through your whole office process? Mm -hmm. um, when you give the estimate, whether it's over the phone or in person, when you're showing up on time um, in a clean, you know, clean cut uniform and a clean vehicle, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then when your guys show up, go ahead. Yeah. What I'm getting from you is that the, you know, people think, well, how does experience or creating experience happen when you do something like that? Uh, what, let's say you're in a call center, whatever it might be, maybe I, I'm, I sell jewelry. How do you create an experience in my jewelry shop? Well, it's really, uh, like you were saying, it's really that overall quality customer care that they feel they're being cared for the moment they come into working with you or coming into your shop. Yeah, it feels good to connect with people. It feels good to be relevant, you know, and you can't be, if you're using a call center and, you know, that's okay. I think everyone's there at some point, but that's why it's so important to create the space in your business, start to delegate stuff out mm -hmm. so that you can take a step back and start to work on those systems and processes that allow for you to create that perfect customer experience. Mm -hmm. So not only are you going to win the job, but you're going to get that referral when you ask for it. You're going to get that five-star review when you ask for it. Your go-backs are going to go down mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to, create, you know, a raving fan in the marketplace. Yeah. And here's something else, Shane, people often will tell me, Oh, I got my customer. They did the deal and whatever. And they don't think about them again. And the sad part is that that's not the end of your cycle. That's not the end of your relationship. This is really an ongoing relationship with, in your case, even if it's a one-time product, you want to make sure they're as happy as they can be for ever, that there's no issues with the product going forward and that they will continue to, you know, say good things about you because they're happy with the experience. So talk about the, the ways in which you can follow up and really keep that relationship going. Yeah, I, I think that's a two part thing. Following up after you give the estimate is really big and that's a, you know, a good chance to be creative and, you know, whether you're following up through email, text, phone call, you know, maybe in your follow up, you have a video that talks about your backstory, why you started your business. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you close the job, I, I think so many of us are, you know, financially minded, you know, we, we did the job, we're out, but yeah. when we're relationally minded and we, and we stay in touch after the job is done, we stay top of mind. 
so that when we do ask for a referral, mm -hmm. uh, we do ask for a, a review or whatever, you know, we're going to get those. And yeah. referrals are, you know, referrals are the best type of customer to get. Yeah. There's no customer acquisition cost to acquire them. There's no, um, you should be closing 100% of those. And you yeah. can charge your normal prices with referrals. Yeah. And what's great about that, when you've built a real relationship and whether they're able or they come back for business, regardless of what type of business you're doing, if you built that real relationship, I know for us, we've had people that have been on the show years ago who did advertising, who are still referring people to us because they felt that quality customer care and that real connection to them that, Hey, when they think of someone who needs advertising, they're the first, we're the first person they think about. And that's what you want. Hey, a neighbor down the street moves in with the dog. They're worried about their dog getting out. Oh, I know the perfect person for you. Go to Shane's business. They'll help you out. So that, that's exactly that type of relationship you want to be building. Now, you know, some people you'll go to uh, and they'll try to upsell you immediately and you, it feels dirty, but there is a way to give value and, and, and times give that upsell without feeling icky. You're actually coming from a place of here's something that can actually help you greater. You kind of cut out there at the end. Tell me. Christina. Yeah, I'm talking about the soft sell. Uh, people will often say, okay, you want fries with that? Or in the case of whatever you're selling, oh, let, here's some other stuff to sell you. And that can feel icky sometimes if you're not coming from the place of does this extra stuff that you're selling really meet the value for the customer? Well, and like I was saying, I think in, especially in competitive markets, we're so eager to beat people over the head with talking about ourselves and our awards and our stats and how many reviews we have. And it's, it's, instead of doing that, just talking with them, connecting with them, a real offering reason. relevant value. Mm -hmm. um, and when there's a time and place for those trump cards, you know, yeah. when push comes to shove, you can talk about all of your five star reviews and your awards and all that stuff. Um, but the soft sell is really powerful, you know, and it's, it's, um, it's underutilized. I think, I, I think, yeah. I think everyone, everyone does that. Every business owner is mm -hmm. maybe not every, but it's, it's common where we're just like, all right, this, this, and this, and we're the best. And here's why we're the best. Mm -hmm. and, uh, let them feel, let them feel that you're the best. You know, yeah. your actions speak much louder than the words that you could use. Exactly. And as you build that true relationship and they experience the wonderful customer service where you put them first, automatically when they have a need and you say, hey, I have something that might be able to help you, they'll be like, hey, that sounds cool. Let's go forward. So what I'm getting from you is one of the major five steps here is really offering relevant value that helps your customer uh, being the expert on what you have to offer and letting them know and feel that you're there to be the expert to give them and help them make their lives easier to create that awesome quality customer experience be creative in your follow-up and, and let them know that different ways you keep in contact. I had a wonderful guy I used to work with many years ago from a collection agency. Yeah, collection agency. But I worked at a business and he would call every month. Hey, it's Joe, just calling to see how you're doing. I'm like, hey, Joe, what? And then, you know, he's like, oh, I just want to see that kid. Where are we? Went, you know, just chatting it up. But when we had issues with collections and someone didn't pay us, who did we think of but Joe? So uh, get, being creative and, and following up and being real about the follow-up and making it real. And of course, that soft sell in a way that helps your customer and really brings them value. Uh, those are some of the great tips I'm getting from you today, Shane. Yeah, thank you. So uh, it's been awesome chatting with you. Where can people... Now, Christina. Tell me. Shane, you there? You, you're kind of... I'm here. I... I you kind of cut out at the end there. Sorry. You, you kind of, you, I, the last thing I heard was the soft sell part. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say you'd offered awesome advice in these five tips on how we can help our clients grow, but I don't want us to leave here without you letting them know about more about your businesses, how they can get in contact with you. How can they do that? Oh yeah. Uh, you can check us out at, uh, well, my personal page is Shane Whalen, mm -hmm. uh, and then petbitter.com if you're in the pet world and, uh, but yeah, this was a great conversation and uh, hopefully we can stay in touch. You betcha. Everyone, please go check it out. You know, you want your pets to be safe. I know I live in an apartment, so that's not relevant for me right now. But in the future, should I move to a house, petbitter.com and petcontainmentservices.com. Go check it out, everyone. And thank you, Shane, for coming to Savvy Broadcasting today and sharing your great wisdom. Hey, thanks, Christina. That was fun.